guys, Mr. Bankberg here. This is part one of lesson 3.4. We're going to be taking a look at exponential and logarithmic equations. Only one objective, we are going to solve exponential and logarithmic equations using some of those properties that we talked about earlier in the chapter. A few properties I want to run through before we get into solving some actual equations. Remember, we've got a one-to-one -one property that works for both exponential equations and logarithmic equations. Our exponential one-to-one -one property says if, if we have the same base on an exponential thing on the left and right hand side of our equation, then what we can do is we can just ignore those bases of A and focus on those powers. Same thing is happening if we're looking at a logarithm base A, if we've got the same logarithm on both sides. Again, just ignore those logarithms and look at those x and y values that we're taking the logarithm of. We also have an inverse property for exponentials and logarithms. Those things are opposites of each other. So if we had an exponential with base a raised to a power log base a of x, then that exponential a and that logarithm base a are just going to cancel out, and all we have left over is that x value. Similarly, if we have a log base a of a raised to the x power, again, that a exponential base and that log base a would just cancel each other out and we would be left with that x value. I also want to add one more to this and it's rewriting logarithms and exponentials going back and forth. So if we had a logarithm, let's go log base a of x equals y. Remember, we could rewrite that, and actually this will work either direction, we could rewrite that as a to the y equals x. Or like I said, if we had this exponential, we could go the other way and rewrite that as a logarithm. Taking a look at this first example, we've got e raised to the negative x squared power equals e raised to the power of negative 3x minus 4. Very first thing I see going on with this one is we've got exponentials on both sides and they each have a base of e. So I'm thinking this is a one-to-one -one property equation. So I'm just going to cross off those bases of e and I'm going to focus on this negative x squared and this negative 3x minus 4. Now what I see is a quadratic equation and in order to solve a quadratic we need to have a zero on one side. So what I would do with this negative x squared is I would add it over to the other side and then our equation would say zero equals x squared minus three x minus four. And I'm pretty sure that this one is gonna factor out. I think we can go x minus four and x plus one equals zero. And then what we would do is just take each one of those individual factors. So x minus four, set it equal to zero, and x plus one, set that equal to zero, and solve each one of those individually. So we get x equals four and x equals negative one. Taking a look at our next example, we've got e to the power of x equals five. Now I'm gonna use my inverse property on this one. In order to get rid of a base e exponential, I'm going to need a base e logarithm. And remember another name for that is a natural log. So I'm going to take the natural log of this e to the x, and I'm also going to do the natural log of that five. Well, when we do the natural log of e to the x, this base e logarithm cancels out with that base e exponential. So all we have left over on the left-hand side is that x. On the right-hand side, we're just taking the natural log of this five, and then we're basically done. We got x all by itself. We could type this into the calculator if we wanted to. If we did that, we'd get about 1.609 if we round off to three decimals. Taking a look at our next example, we've got 2 to the power of x equals 64. Now this one doesn't look like a one-to-one -one property equation, but it actually is. Because I know that I could rewrite this 64 as 2 to the 6th power. So then our equation says 2 to the x equals 2 to the 6th. We can just cross off those bases of 2. And then our equation says x equals 6, and we're done. Next one, we've got log of x equals negative one. I'm going to rewrite this one as an exponential equation. Okay, the base isn't written here, but remember it's automatically a base 10 logarithm if it's not written. So this would say 10 to the negative first power equals x. We could rewrite this as a fraction in order to get rid of that negative exponent. So it would be one over 10 to the first power equals x, but we know that 10 to the first power is just 10, so this is 1 tenth. Next couple examples might take us a few extra steps, but it's just using some Algebra 1 stuff before we get into doing the actual logarithmic or exponential. 
things. So in part A, we've got four times three to the x equals 64. In order to work on getting this x all by itself, what I would do first is get rid of that four out in front of our exponential by just dividing it on both sides. So those things cancel out. We've got three to the x equals 16. Now I think what I would do with this one is rewrite it in logarithmic form. So then we get log base three of 16 equals x. Now you may or may not be able to type this one into your calculator as is if you've got one of those log base buttons. Otherwise you might have to use a change of base formula to help you out. So I personally like that natural log formula. So I'm gonna go natural log of 16 divided by natural log of three. And when we type that into our calculator, we get about 2.524 if we round that off to three decimals. Similarly, on the next one, we've got some extra work to do before we can start dealing with this exponential piece. So I'm going to subtract the five from both sides of the equation. We get negative three times e to the x equals negative three. If we divide both sides by that negative three in front of that e to the x, we get e to the x equals one. Uh, we could rewrite this so that we could use a one-to-one -one property. I know that e to the zero power is the same thing as one. So then it says e to the x equals e to the zero. So that means that our x value is zero. This next example is also going to be a little bit involved. There's some work we need to do before we can start solving for our variable. First thing I see going on back in Algebra 1, we said we would have to get rid of addition or subtraction first. So I'm going to add this four over to the other side. So we've got two times three to the two t minus five equals 15. Then if we divide by two on both sides, we get three to the power of two t minus five equals 15 halves or 7.5. Now what I'm gonna do is I think I wanna rewrite this one in its logarithmic form. So then we get log base three of 15 halves equals our exponential power two t minus five. Now we're still trying to get this t value all by itself. So I'm going to add this five over to the left hand side and I'm actually gonna rewrite it as five plus log base three of 15 halves equals our 2t. Then in order to get our variable all by itself, all we have to do is divide by two on both sides. So we get five plus log base three of 15 halves all over two equals our t value. Next one says six times two to the power of t plus five plus four equals 11. So I'm going to subtract the four from both sides. So we get six times two to the power of t plus five equals seven. Divide by the six on both sides. We get two to the power of t plus five equals seven sixth. Again, I think I wanna rewrite this in its logarithmic form. So log base two of seven sixths equals that power of t plus five. And I want to subtract this five over to the other side. So we get negative five plus this log base two of seven over six equals our t value. And I think we're done with that one. The last couple examples look sort of like quadratic equations. So this one, it says e to the power of two x minus three times e to the x plus two equals zero. And we can actually rewrite this in quadratic form. e to the two x power is really the same as e to the x squared minus three e to the x plus two equals zero. And now, instead of this saying e to the x, let's just pretend it says x for a minute. We would try to factor this out. Now in order to get this plus two on the end and a minus three in the middle, I think we'd need a minus two and a minus one. But remember, we don't have just x's now, we have e to the x. So this is e to the x minus two and e to the x minus one equals zero. Then we would set each one of those equal to zero. So e to the x minus two equals zero and e to the x minus one equals zero and solve each one in individually. So this one we would add the two over to get e to the x equals two. 
I'm going to rewrite this in logarithmic form. This is a base e logarithm. So we're gonna use a natural log of two equals our x value. On this one, we would add the one over to the other side. So we get e to the x equals one. Again, we can use a natural log. So go natural log of one equals x. And there we get our answer. Last example says e to the 2x minus 7 e to the x equals negative 12. I'm going to rewrite this in quadratic form as e to the x squared minus 7 e to the x. Now in order to solve a quadratic, we need a zero on one side. So I'm actually going to add this 12 over at the exact same time. Now solving this one, we're gonna do a little factoring. So we need to multiply to 12 and add up to negative seven. So I'm thinking we could go negative four and negative three with these e to the x's out in front. So then we get e to the x minus four equals zero. Add the four over, we get e to the x equals four. Rewrite using a natural log, natural log of four equals x. If we look at solving the other one, e to the x minus three equals zero, add the three over, we get e to the x equals three, and rewrite using a natural log, we get the natural log of three equals x. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.